Hi, I'm Jonas Rapp. Today I'll talk about the Power Apps Portals Entity Permission Manager. It's a tool for the XRM Toolbox designed to help you work with the entity permissions a bit smoother and a bit easier than it is in the out-of-the-box experience. So when you start XRM Toolbox, you will see the list of uh, all the tools you have available. I'll just search for Portal and we can see the Portal Entity Permission Manager there. It will now load all the websites in the environment and uh, list all the entity permissions below here. So we can see I only have one custom portal in this environment. And I can see all the entity permissions listed here. They have uh, small icons indicating what scope they have. So we have the earth symbol indicating this is a global scope. And then the small person is a contact scope, account scope and the self scope. So when you select one of these entity permissions from the environment, you can see to the right more all the details about that one. You have the name, you have the scope, parent is not applicable for this global scope, which table is it targeting? And then of course, what privileges do we have? So we can see here that all contacts, uh, even anonymous users, we see also the web roles listed here that are associated with the entity permission. So any user logging into the portal or not even logging, just browsing to the portal since it's anonymous, will get read access to the product entity or table, I should say. Uh, if we go further, we can look at this. Okay, this is a contact scope. And to help you a bit here, it only lists tables that have an actual relationship to contact. So it's it's relevant to select any of those. You will never get this. You selected a table, well, there's no relationship. So I selected subscription in this case, and I see, okay, there's only one relationship between contact and subscription. It's a many to many, well, between those two entities. And I have read access. And if I change anything here, uh, I can just say deluxe. I get the save icon here, sort of save to Dataverse. It will upload it. Um, it will light up when you have changes there. And it, it will actually keep track of any changes you have. So if you remove this again, it will be disabled because you have not made any changes. If we expand this uh, contact scope entry permission, we can see that we have another child permission registered under that. So we have a subscription tasks. It will list tasks for the subscriptions. And we have read access for that as well. And uh, we see here that the scope is parent. And when you have set the scope to parent, based on the one you select, it will know, okay, the parent entity permission is listing uh, subscriptions. So what tables do we have available with, with a relationship to subscription? In this case, apparently six different uh, entities are related somehow to the subscription entity. Uh, contact, as we saw from the previous uh, uh, entity permission, and then subscription client, task, and so on, even subscription itself. So I guess there's a self-referencing relationship there. And also now that I selected the task table, I get to see which relationship can I use there. It's only one there as well, a many-to-many -many relationship. This one currently doesn't have any assigned web roles, so I will just click the add button to associate web roles with that. Let's say we have admins and authenticated users and then just click OK. There we see we have these web roles. Authenticate. Oh, let's change this only admins, so we'll remove authenticated users. Yes, OK. We can also switch the layout of this. Now it shows the entity permission names. As we can see here, subscription tasks is what I call this entity permission. If I switch to actual relationship, it will show you more from a, a database structure perspective. So we can see that this will list subscription and we also see what we have read permission there and we have task under that. Then we have this one. It just said context leads or my leads. That was the name of this entity permission. But it knows that, OK, it will list leads for where the parent contact is listed as the contact here. And in this way, you can see, OK, the opportunity of the lead and so on. It will sort of try to explain to you what are the actual relationships that, that this entity permission is based on. Um, finally, if we check this self uh, scope permission, we just see that when we select scope self, we can only select the contact entity. 
In the other box experience, you can select any entity and it will complain and say you cannot select that, but you can. So in this case, for contact, I can read an update. Let's say I should be able to delete myself as well. I will save that. Now it's saved. So that's the, the views here. What, what we can also do is create entirely new entity permissions. So for instance, if we look at this uh, self-service, I can even add a child permission to that. So this button will create an entirely new. This will create a child entity permission to the currently selected entity permission. This one will delete the selected, don't want to do that. And this button will open this entity permission in the out-of-the-box experience within Dataverse. Let's create a child entity permission to the self-service one. So this is, well, what should we call this? Opportunities. I can see which entities are available with relationships from contact. So I can select opportunity. And how can I relate to that? Well, we see an, on an opportunity, we have potential customer, that's a contact. We also have well the contact lookup and then the partner contact. And these are all many to one. So there are lookups from the opportunity, which means when I add this to my self-service, I will get a list of all the opportunities where let's say the contact is a potential customer. And I can read, update, and probably append and append to is needed and save that. So now we should have a new child entity permission to this self-service. See this here. Of course, we would need to add some web roles. If we check this one, we didn't have any for self-service. Just easily add, okay, authenticated users, add this one, and then do the same for opportunities as well. So basically, that's the uh, short intro to the Portal Entity Permission Manager in External Toolbox. Enjoy.